December 1986, McDonnell Douglas launches the MD-11 with 52 firm orders from the world's biggest airlines. American, Delta, Singapore Airlines, everyone wanted one. However, after just five years, American Airlines did something almost unheard of in aviation. They retired their entire MD-11 fleet. Delta follows, then Singapore Airlines. But here's what makes no sense. While passenger airlines were desperately trying to get rid of these planes, FedEx and UPS were buying them up as fast as they could. FedEx brought the entire American Airlines MD-11 fleet, followed by UPS, which spent $2 billion on an aircraft that passenger airlines called a nightmare. And today, 35 years after these jets first flew, both companies are still operating them, not retiring them, rather extending their service life. Even after a crash this year that grounded the entire fleet and forced emergency inspections, FedEx pushed their retirement date from 2028 to 2032. UPS? They haven't even set a retirement date at all. So why do UPS and FedEx still fly these 35-year-old gas-guzzling MD-11s when modern, fuel-efficient alternatives exist? To understand why the MD-11 became a workhorse for cargo carriers, we need to first understand why the MD-11 failed as a passenger carrier. The story begins in December 1986, when McDonnell Douglas officially launched the MD-11 program with considerable fanfare and optimism. The aircraft was positioned as a stretched, modernized successor to the DC-10, retaining the distinctive three-engine configuration that had defined its predecessor, but incorporating significant technological advancements. The design featured a longer fuselage to accommodate more passengers and cargo, a state-of-the-art glass cockpit that brought the jet into the digital age, and more efficient engines that promised better fuel consumption. On paper, the MD-11 represented the perfect modernized jet for the 1990s market. McDonnell Douglas marketed the MD-11 aggressively to airlines as a long-range, fuel-efficient replacement for aging DC-10s, one that could match or even beat the performance of upcoming twin-engine competitors, like Boeing's 777, which was still in development. The market responded enthusiastically. The MD-11 received 52 firm orders and 40 options from 10 airlines, including major carriers like American, Delta, and Singapore Airlines. For McDonnell Douglas, this represented validation that there was still a place for three-engine aircraft in the evolving long-haul market. But the excitement and sales momentum soon began to evaporate as the MD-11 entered service and airlines discovered a troubling gap between promise and reality. Major carriers became openly unhappy with the MD-11's real-world performance, particularly during the aircraft's early operational years. The complaints centered on two critical metrics, fuel consumption and range. The MD-11 was burning more fuel than advertised, and more problematically, it wasn't achieving the range figures that McDonnell Douglas had guaranteed in its sales brochures. American and Delta Airlines, two of the MD-11's largest customers at the time, publicly voiced their frustration. For them, these weren't minor quibbles about comfort features or minor operational quirks. These were fundamental performance shortfalls that directly impacted route planning and operational economics. Both airlines felt they had been sold one aircraft on paper and delivered another in practice. The disappointment was so severe that both carriers took the extraordinary step of cancelling portions of their MD-11 orders and pivoting to Boeing's 777 instead. For airlines that had invested millions in planning their fleets around the MD-11, this represented a humiliating and expensive reversal. The message was clear. They felt cheated because the real-world range and economics simply didn't match the brochure promises. Faced with mounting complaints and the reputational damage of having its flagship product publicly criticized by major customers, McDonnell Douglas was forced to respond. In the early 1990s, the company launched what it called a performance improvement program, a comprehensive effort involving aerodynamic tweaks, engine upgrades, and weight-saving modifications. While the PIP did yield improvements, the upgrades never fully closed the gap between what had been promised and what was delivered. The MD-11 remained perpetually behind the curve, always trying to catch up to expectations it could never quite meet. If disappointing range and fuel burn weren't bad enough, the MD-11 faced another serious problem that would haunt its reputation throughout its service life. 
Compared to its emerging twin-engine rival, the Boeing 777, the MD-11 was a maintenance nightmare. The tail-mounted number two engine, while aerodynamically efficient, was considerably more awkward to access for routine inspections and repairs. Technicians needed more time and specialized expertise to service it compared to the underwing engines on twin jets. Even more concerning, the MD-11 inherited a critical design vulnerability from its DC-10 predecessor, a flaw that had already proven deadly. The engine pylon attachment points, particularly on the wing-mounted engines, were vulnerable to damage during maintenance operations due to tight clearances and high stress loads. This was the same weakness that had contributed to the catastrophic crash of American Airlines Flight 191 in 1979, the deadliest aviation accident on US soil. Even decades later, this vulnerability remained. We saw echoes of this concern as recently as the crash of UPS Airlines Flight 2976, where the left engine detached shortly after takeoff. According to the NTSB's preliminary report, investigators found that parts of the engine pylon showed signs of fatigue cracks, a troubling reminder that some design issues persist across decades. While the MD-11 struggled with its reputation, the competitive landscape was shifting dramatically beneath it. ETOPS, or Extended Range Twin Engine Operational Performance Standards, had begun to mature. This regulatory framework allowed twin-engine aircraft to fly routes that took them further from diversion airports, routes that had previously been the exclusive domain of three- and four-engine aircraft. This regulatory shift coincided with the arrival of a new generation of highly capable twin-engine aircraft. The Boeing 777 and Airbus A330 became the new standard for long-haul operations, after ETOPS extensions opened up transoceanic routes, these twins could fly virtually all the same missions the MD-11 was designed to dominate, but they could do it more profitably. For airlines operating on thin margins, twin-engine jets offered compelling economics that the MD-11 simply could not match. The consequences were swift and merciless. Airlines began retiring MD-11s from passenger service at a pace that shocked even industry observers. American Airlines became the first major carrier to pull the plug, retiring its MD-11 fleet in 1996 after just five years of service, an astonishingly short operational life for a wide-body aircraft that typically flies for decades. Other carriers weren't far behind. By the early 2000s, most passenger airlines had phased out their MD-11s entirely, replacing them with more efficient twin-engine alternatives. For an aircraft that had launched with such promise barely a decade earlier, it was an embarrassing end. But here's where the story takes an unexpected turn. What proved to be an unfavorable acquisition for passenger carriers became an extraordinarily attractive proposition for cargo operators like UPS and FedEx. When passenger airlines started retiring their MD-11 fleets, these aircraft had an average age of just eight years, remarkably young for airframes designed to remain viable for 30 to 40 years of service. With virtually no demand from passenger carriers, the acquisition costs plummeted. The MD-11 became significantly cheaper than alternatives, particularly when compared to newer purpose-built freighters like the Boeing 747-400F and later the 777F. Studies of the freighter market during the 2000s reveal the compelling economics. Investors and cargo operators found they could purchase a used MD-11, pay for a full passenger to freighter conversion, and still come out well below the price of a new 747-400F. This represented an enormous capital advantage at a time when both FedEx and UPS were aggressively expanding their international air networks. FedEx moved first and moved decisively. In 1996, the company acquired 19 MD-11s that had just been retired by American Airlines. This was not a cautious experiment, but a strategic bet. By 1999, UPS announced a $2 billion purchase plan for 13 MD-11F converted freighters with options for 22 additional aircraft. These were massive fleet commitments that would shape both companies' operations for decades. What made the MD-11 particularly attractive to cargo operators was its position in the wide-body market. The aircraft had been designed from the outset as a long-haul wide-body jet, and as a freighter, it occupied a highly desirable sweet spot in the capacity spectrum. The MD-11F could carry a maximum payload of roughly 85 to 100 metric tons, depending on configuration and route requirements. This positioned it perfectly between smaller twin jets like the Boeing 767-300F 
and massive jumbos like the 747 400F. For cargo operators, this mid-range capacity proved ideal. The MD-11 could carry significantly more than a 767-300F, making it suitable for high-volume routes, but it did so without the enormous capital costs and operating expenses associated with operating 747s. UPS and FedEx prioritize maximizing payload on longer hauls rather than operating the high-frequency flights typical of passenger service, where every percentage point of fuel efficiency compounds across thousands of daily flights. The less frequent flight schedules meant that differences in fuel efficiency weren't as heavily compounded as they would be in high-utilization passenger service. The range issue that had so frustrated passenger airlines became almost irrelevant in cargo service. Even though passenger airlines were disappointed that the MD-11 did not quite meet its advertised long-haul range capabilities, for UPS and FedEx, approximately 4,000 nautical miles of range was entirely sufficient. This range adequately covered key long-haul routes connecting US hubs to major destinations in Europe and Asia, which represent the backbone of International Express cargo operations. Moreover, even when Boeing launched the more efficient 777F in the late 2000s, UPS continued to prefer the MD-11 for certain operations. While the 777F offered superior fuel efficiency and a slightly higher payload capacity, for routes where the efficiency advantage did not justify the capital cost differential, the MD-11 continued to make excellent economic sense. There was another critical factor that made the MD-11 particularly attractive to FedEx, fleet commonality. FedEx had operated one of the largest fleets of DC-10 aircraft in the world, accumulating decades of operational experience with McDonnell Douglas's tri-jet design philosophy. The MD-11 represented a logical evolutionary step from a fleet planning perspective. This commonality had profound operational and economic implications. The cockpit layouts were similar enough that pilot type rating transitions were straightforward, which translated directly into reduced training costs and more flexible crew scheduling. The benefits extended beyond the cockpit. Maintenance crews could leverage their existing expertise. While the MD-11 incorporated newer systems and components, the fundamental architecture remained recognizable to technicians who had spent years working on DC-10s. Replicating FedEx's success through fleet commonality, UPS increased its commitment by ordering 11 additional MD-11s in 2005, doubling down on fleet expansion based on proven operational success and the billions of dollars already invested in supporting infrastructure. Fast forward to today, and both operators are flying MD-11s with an average age of 35 years, ancient by modern aviation standards. The fleet recently faced scrutiny when the FAA temporarily grounded all MD-11s following the crash of UPS Flight 2976 in Louisville, pending comprehensive inspections and corrective measures on the engine pylons. So you might think this would accelerate retirement plans, but the opposite has occurred. FedEx, which had been planning to retire its MD-11 fleet by 2028, has now extended that deadline to 2032. Even more remarkably, UPS hasn't set any firm retirement timeline for its MD-11 fleet at all. This isn't stubbornness or reluctance to modernize. It's a calculated response to market conditions. According to FedEx Chief Financial Officer John Dietrich, the global supply chain has experienced unprecedented strain over the past few years. Post-pandemic buying habits disrupted established logistics networks, geopolitical tensions forced supply chain reorganizations, and e-commerce growth continues to drive the demand for air cargo capacity. These compounding factors created a perfect storm for freight operators. These pressures, combined with both companies' strategies to capture larger shares of the lucrative international air freight market, have prompted fundamental reassessments of fleet management approaches. There's another crucial financial consideration at play. Most MD-11s currently in service with FedEx and UPS are either fully paid off or heavily depreciated on the company's balance sheets. This means the primary costs associated with operating them are incremental expenses like fuel, maintenance, and crew, rather than capital costs. This financial structure allows both operators to extract remaining value from the MD-11s over an extended period, essentially earning out every dollar of operational value before replacement becomes economically compelling. 
Replacement will occur when new aircraft types provide sufficiently better operating margins to justify the massive capital investment required. Until that threshold is reached, the MD-11 will remain financially viable for both operators. The MD-11's story reveals an aviation paradox. What failed spectacularly in passenger service found enduring success in cargo operations. While airlines abandoned these trijets after barely a decade, cargo carriers found that low acquisition costs, adequate range and fleet commonality outweighed fuel efficiency concerns. Three and a half decades later, FedEx and UPS continue flying these aging workhorses not out of stubbornness, but because the economics still make sense. In an industry obsessed with efficiency and modernization, the MD-11 endures as proof that sometimes the best aircraft isn't the newest or most efficient. It's the one that still turns a profit. As long as these jets remain economically viable and mechanically sound, don't expect them to disappear from the skies anytime soon.